Hi, this is James Gray. Welcome to the Gray Matter Podcast. In this episode, I speak with Harpreet Carr. She's a woman leader with a proven track record of delivering impactful results in the tech industry. As a director, principal product manager at Microsoft, she drives the product and strategy for Windows Server and Azure Stack. With extensive experience in executive management and technical leadership, she has gained a deep understanding of organizations' challenges and can offer practical solutions. One of her greatest passions is mentoring and coaching individuals to help them achieve their full potential. Harpreet is also the CEO of Why Blend In, which lives by the motto, Why Blend In When You're Born to Stand Out? In this episode, we discuss the power of connection and branding, how a five to nine side hustle creates unique opportunities, envisioning a legacy to be remembered, how to stand out, how to break through and embrace who you are, Growing a brand through consistency and authenticity, diversity and inclusion, and the gift of asking someone how they're doing. You can listen to this podcast on Apple, Spotify, Google, Overcast, and YouTube. I hope you enjoy the episode. Hi, this is James Gray, your host of the Gray Matter Podcast, uh, about intelligent ideas and technology shaping the future of human potential. And I'm really excited today to reconnect with a former colleague, Harpreet Kaur. She's a director and technical program manager at Microsoft. We work together, but it's been eight years since we've worked together. And I'm just really excited and and honored to um, have her dedicate some time. I've seen her career blossom, uh, but just as important, I've seen her really inspire so many other people, really take ownership. Uh, of their career and bring it to the next level. So Harpreet, really thanks for for joining me today. Yeah, no, thank you so much, James, uh, you know, for having me on your podcast as well. And as you were stating, you know, we, uh, it's been eight years and I'm yes. like, oh my God, time flies. Uh, but, uh, you know, we can probably end this podcast right now because this is what the power of networking is, right? <laughs> like if you think about it, the reason we kept connected, the reason we saw each other and admired each other is the yes. power of branding, is the power of connection and fostering relationship. It's not about, you know, when you just click the button, like, it's yeah. then, right? And connect. It's less about right. that. It's how do you keep those authentic relationships? So it's, and it's not one way street. Sure. Uh, so I really appreciate you reaching out to, for me to also to be a guest on your pod- podcast as well. So thank you so much. Yeah, no, it's it's welcome. And, um, you know, over these last number of years, I've just seen your career, you know, frankly, just blossom. Um, I, I was on your profile the other day and you have like over 20,000 <laughs> connections on LinkedIn. I was like, gosh, I really need to uh, really meet uh, and, and learn from Harpreet. Um, but uh, maybe before we get into right some of the topics that I'm just really curious about, why don't you just say a little bit more about who you are and what you're up to these days at Microsoft? You know, uh, for everyone uh, listening or uh, who will be listening through this podcast, first of all, hopefully it'll become a great success. So best of luck for you, uh, James, as well. So I actually introduced myself as, um, you know, as someone who has had multi-dimensional career. When you look at a woman like me, I am a a woman of tech. Uh, I'm a woman in tech, person of color, first generation uh, tech leader at Microsoft. I've been in the industry for 20 plus uh, years now. Uh, It's interesting, as I say it, I'm going to age myself, but I started very early. (laughs) And um, interestingly enough, it's been a journey of ups and downs uh, to a point where, yes, I am working on the next generation of hyper-converged infrastructure. So hybrid clouds, if you've heard about those. Mm -hmm. Uh, Azure, I know everyone's heard about it. But the combination of on-prem and the virtual side of it. Uh, So I'm working on the next generation of products on that. And as part of my Uber org, our our, uh, mission is to keep our customers always protected and productive. So, uh, you know, even though I'm on the server side, my mm-hmm. Uber Org's uh, mission is to make sure every month when you get those Patch Tuesday updates from on uh, from Microsoft, that's our team. So that's your we team. cannot make we. It, it's 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 a it's a very very high all hands on tech. Uh, kind of the hundreds of people who are making sure that 
the patches which we sent are great and you are always protected. Um, but as a product leader, I it's interesting that I'm always looking for a new challenge within my role yes. as well. So, you know, nine to five, that's what I do. I try to lead teams. I try to build strong and diverse teams uh, in, in and always learning. And then uh, my five to nine is my side hustle or my, uh, I'm the CEO of Vibland In, which is a company which I started almost four or five years back and um, it, uh, through which I do a lot of leadership exec and career coaching. I got myself certified in all kind of certifications. Sure. And then I also do a lot of uh, corporate keynote speaking as well. And I think, um, and I'd love to dig in a little bit about your company, right? Um, why blend in? Um, I, you know, one, I think it's in interesting um, as well as I think one of the things that I was really intrigued, certainly you've done more of it over the last eight years since, right, since we've connected is um, that you, you've got a very demanding job given what you've talked, but, but yep. it's very interesting. You as a leader, you take out time right to to be a part of the culture and really shape the culture um beyond just the technical work you do so i'm just really curious like what 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 inspires you to do like what motivates you right because you do a lot of that inside of microsoft which is amazing right i did that when i was there as well and it is a an unusual culture that allows us right as technology leaders to also take these passions and these interests and and just allow us to take it anywhere to add value and really um, allow us to be ourselves, but also add many other dimensions and value to right the, the culture and helping people. So tell me a little bit about like why why do you do that? What what, yeah, it, what so inspires you to? Yeah. It's interesting, James. You you say that because guess what? Uh, you know, for the folks listening, James and I actually connected over one of the session he did where he talked <laughs> about the seven stages or seven yeah three, seven yeah seven yeah. seven right and um of the and i was junior to james that time let's be honest like and it's less about the ranks but we yeah. connected um in any case right like the the reason i started why blend in um there, there was a health reason. This is my life 2.0. Um, and I, when I was in the hospital and I was looking at my husband and I'm like, you know, today, if I, I'm not here, mm. what's my legacy? Mm. Um, uh, you know, for, uh, yes, you can be at the highest in whatever role you are tomorrow. If you are gone one way or the other, uh, and it's a little sober thing, which I'm getting into, but mm -hmm. just, just listen to this one. We, as, as, uh, you know, by office policy or corporate policy, you will get an email. This has happened. We are so sorry for the loss of your colleague or your leader, blah, 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 blah. Here is the HR resources to help you get out of that grief. Right. Within five to 10 days, your role is reopened and people start hiring on behalf of your role. Within a few months, you're literally forgotten, folks. Mm. Yes, you will be in some journals. Yes, you will be quoted and all, but what's your legacy, right? Uh, so that was one of the things which I felt like, what's my legacy? Is this hybrid? want to be called as someone who yes led all the projects and all delivered really good product leader plus she impacted or made lives or she connected folks or she sure. opened up opportunities or she impacted so i was like what's the way and i had by that time i had anyway started speaking a lot within microsoft as well and i was i i saw when satya's hit refresh came in as well sure. right where oh, he yeah. said, use Microsoft as a platform to achieve your dreams as well, your passions as well. And, you know, I've always been a speaker at my, you know, in my universities and in my college time, in my school time. And I was like, I'm going to give it a try because I was anyway getting a lot of requests for mentorship. 
Sure. And so I got certified in uh, coaching. I got so I did J Shetty coaching. I did a lot of Dale Carnegie leadership coaching. I did ACC coaching. First, I got I did not call myself career coach just because I had the experience. Right. I I wanted to make sure I have those right frameworks. So that's that was my uh, you know health uh, health thing, which where I was very close to okay, is this my thing or that. Um, then it just one thing after the other, the opportunity started coming in and LinkedIn reached out. I became a content creator as well. But, you know, one thing with James, I I will say when I said I'm a tech leader and then I say, uh, uh, you know, five to nine is my side hustle. Yes. The interconnected connection between all this is my family, right? It's my husband, the two kids. Uh, yes. The angels and the troublemakers, which I call them sure. in the same sentence, which keeps me, uh, you know, uh, frankly motivated. And they are my great motivation as well as my biggest critics as well. Yeah, no, that, that's really kind of fascinating. And I think, you know, you, you said something that um, I think uh, should be kind of a reminder to everybody, right? What do we want our legacy to be? Exactly. Right. Right. Like we're not promised tomorrow, which is kind of what I sense, which I sensed a little bit, right. In, in what you were saying, right. You were, you were, uh, I think you said you were in the hospital, you were, you were in a, in a situation, right. So I think that's a great, um, really challenge for us all to, to kind of think about, um, around our legacy. How do we want to be remembered and how, how do we like, where do we spend our time to do that? And then, um, you know, one of the, one of the things, you know, about your company, I, um, you know, you talked a little bit about maybe why you started it, but I think there's also a message here that I, when I think about you, um, I think about someone who is so proud in embracing the uniqueness. Yes. Right. Yeah. Right. And I, I'd love to maybe dig into that a little bit, right. Especially like there's so many people who are out there and. I think, and again, I'd love to hear it in your own words, but I think you do, you, you share a lot of LinkedIn around just like really believing in yourself, loving yourself. And, and it's that, it's that uniqueness that allows you to bring out something special and memorable that is not only valuable, right. But is, is allows you to be your best self. So, so maybe tell me or a little share with, you know, people about, right. This whole theme that you have, which is like, you've been able to just create something really amazing over these last number of years around this theme, right? About embracing your uniqueness. Yeah. And, and, uh, you know, I talk about why blend in all the time. That's my website. That's where I frankly feel like each one of us have our own authentic self. Uh, and I talk about the message of why blend in when you're born to stand out, it is basically you have a unique way, uh, within sure. yourself. Um, by embracing the uniqueness, breaking that stereotypes and being that force multiplier and connecting to that, James, like I frankly feel like through this company or through the work I've been able to do within and outside of the corporate world is I'm on this journey of finding myself. <laughs> and then when I, I thought about, okay, finding myself, it can become a message for all the you know people who are coming behind us the yeah. young women in tech the young minorities the you know like whoever is not able to find the path we have to be an ally to them as well it is not easy it took me uh, you know, when you ask, like, how long you've been, or like, I was giving a little bit of my profile, 20 years, right? right? Like, should it even take that much time for a person of mind cap caliber, mm -hmm. masters in computers, always a valedictorian and all, to reach to where I am that much time? There have been a lot of ups and downs because sure. of... I was not believing in myself as well as others were having the unconscious biases sure. because what happens is when you are, you have a hunch of that I'm not good enough, I don't have it in myself, you don't embrace who you are, you don't break free, you are always covering. And I was living with that blend in syndrome for almost 30 years of my life. 
Mm. And, you know, born up, born in an India, hopefully, uh, I'm not stating anything like, which is out of the norm. Uh, it, uh, India is a developing country. Um, I don't want anyone to come after me that, how do you <laughs> say India? Yes. <laughs> You know, India is, is on a trajectory, you know, uh, of great growth. But when I was born and as a, as a girl child, I still remember my mom and dad still tells me these stories. You know, my, um, you know, community cried. Oh, my God, a girl child. Right. And then on top of it, I was not fair enough for them. I did not have the shop features as you know girls should have and then always a question of who's going to get married to this like she's not beautiful enough she's that kind of reaches you know inside you and i sure. felt like all these years as i was growing growing up teens and all and i wasn't wearing a turban then like you know i was still part of the faith but i was following it as as you know like yes i'm born in this faith and i follow it without understanding and then i was always asking for that outside in acceptance even when i got married i was asking my husband am i looking beautiful enough am oh. i looking like you know when i was dressing up hey is this dress looks good on me mm. or you know trying all kind of makeup tricks and all but it wasn't until i started deep diving into when I moved to US, deep diving into my own culture, my own faith, got some, um, you know, and started reading myself. And then I got baptized as well. And then uh, one day my son said, mom, you always say in our faith, men and women are equal. I wear a turban. So he had started wearing a smaller version of this. And then he's like, why don't you? And I'm like, there you go. And that's when I felt like mm. I'm going to do this as uh, and as part of my faith um, and, you know, stand out. But that indirectly, it's less about physically standing up out as well, which anyway I do and, and now. But it was also that I was out of that syndrome of I cannot do something. It was also like embracing my own uniqueness, my own individuality, my own USPs, right? My own yes. unique selling points, which I had, the passions uh, without hesitating that I cannot do this, which James indirectly helped me in taking on more impactful work at, at my corporate job which then indirectly helped me rise pretty quickly yes. versus when I was covering yeah. myself. And I was, instead of like shining bright, which is what I say, most of my emails, I, I end with shine bright. Shine bright. I love that. Right. And I was able to break free of that, what I had got in my mind and in my heart all these years mm -hmm. that, you know, I have to ask for acceptance. I have, I do, I'm not good enough. Maybe they don't like my, you know, moving to US. I'm not fair enough. I don't have their accent. Um, like, you know, always trying to gel in versus I'm to saying, you know what? This is me. And I have the power in me to find my own tribe, to be unapologetic and bring the strengths which I have and then keep learning, keep working on my opportunities sure. to improve. Sure. Yeah, no, it's a fascinating, fascinating journey, right? And and really what I heard you say was, right, you were, there was a lot of pressures that were on you, almost these, yep. these pressures that probably influenced your own self-beliefs of who you were right and then right you you kind of embraced right and you you were able to overcome them and like look at what you've done right and so that's probably a message to many other people i think i, I was telling you earlier that um i work with uh, uh young uh, professionals they're in a graduate business school Many of them, probably 80% of them are, are from India, just as an example, but other countries. And I do hear some of that, right? Like, gosh, I don't know if I should say that. I don't know if I could uh, put that on my resume. I don't know if I should put that on my LinkedIn profile. And in some cases, I ask them, well, you know, what's behind that or, or why, right? Yeah. Um, and, it's, and it's probably in many cases what, you, what you're just talking about. So I'm curious, like, 
and again, I know everybody's different, but as you, as you said, as you kind of peel back, right. To, to kind of bring the, the gold out, right. What, was there any like one or two things that really helped you kind of, um, yeah, just kind of overcome, right. Some of those pressures, because probably most of it is like pressures that we put on ourselves, but then there's this activation energy, like how do we overcome that? And like, finally get out there and realize, oh, wow, there's like something so powerful out there about being ourselves. And so what, and I know there's probably not one magic silver bullet, but were, was there maybe a couple that really helped you kind of? Yeah, I, I would say um, I, I will be very candid and honest. When I started writing, mm. I, I tried to find a medium. I was like, there's so much in me, which I need to kind of tell people. And um, when you start, so this is probably a good one. When you start, remember there it, out of 100 followers, maybe 99 will push back and mm -hmm. one will be with you. Maybe even your own friends will say, what a bad idea. In this journey, I've lost relations. Mm. In the, this journey, I've lost because I'm being who I am now. And they're like, oh, she is, um, you know, telling wrong things about our culture or, or not even wrong things or, you know, stating the things which, you know, happens to every other girl child. Why is she special? Mm. Right, like yes, um, you know, we want our girls to be beautiful. What's wrong in that? And I'm like, no, right, like you know. So I will be honest. I have lost relationships. I, I've lost some friends when you start coming out, and mm. it, when you start coming, your your so you start bringing your authentic self. It is a hard journey, but at the same time, the fruits which it comes brings you you like i felt like i was living a life i was living two lives mm. right there was something inside me which i was not able to tell so first is that once you're able to overcome that which is like hey people are always gonna talk james sure no matter how good you are how sure. much you know as a corporate leader you're bringing so much business to a company people are always going to talk something which is maybe a little bit which is going wrong that's in your personal as well as professional life once you're over that hump that you're not everyone cups of cup of tea or coffee yes find the right role role models and mentors who you can hook towards or someone you even like, if you're not able to find that, go follow them, right? Today in this digital world, you can get inspiration through thousand angles. Find someone who will be there in your this journey. For me, it was my husband who was always motivating me. It was my kids. It, it, it is still my both, both my kids and my husband who are like, mom, we are here. Um, wow. And then find a medium. Right, like, be what is that medium? Is it gonna be you're gonna start writing a blog, you're gonna start a podcast like you, or you're gonna start coaching, or whatever? Like, are you gonna become an Instagram hero or a TikTok hero? Whatever your way of telling that story is, be ready to embrace those challenges, take risks. You know what le least can happen? You will get a no. That's the same thing as when you interview, right? Like, sure. there are only two. There's a yes and a no. It's yeah. the continuous learning. And uh, for me, it's it was such an eye opening that, oh, my God, I just am trying to peel so many layers of me. And I've got so much. People ask me, Harpreet, how do you do keynote speaking? How do you do TEDx? Yeah, blah, blah, blah. Yes. And I'm like, you know, I don't have it all in a day. I am... I do not. And that's me being very candid and vulnerable. Um, I, you know, my home is a mess sometimes. I don't know what we are cooking for dinner. And that is okay. 
right. I, uh, you know, I will ask my husband to go pick the kids or we are literally working. We are literally, you know, we plan like, okay, what's next? What's next hour, right? Like, so that's okay. But it's how sure. do you give grace to yourself when it's something goes haywire? Yeah, that's, that's, um, that's really amazing. And I, you know, I think certainly the, the Microsoft culture, you know, I was there for 10 years, as you know, allows you in, in my right to, to, to allow you to express yourself and be yourself and, and allows you to bring your kind of talents. Um, uh, but I, I suspect that you started this company, Why Blend In? Because there was other things that you wanted to do, right? Exactly. To, exactly. to open up to open up additional things. Maybe you can tell, maybe, because there's probably, there could be people listening. It's like, ah, you know, I'd love to be able to do something that's an expression of, you know, some of my talents. And so um, maybe, maybe you can just say a little bit about, like, what is that opened up, right? Because we know a job can't, you know, serve all of our needs, right? And so maybe just say a little bit about one, what is, what is, um, why blend in mean? I, I mean, I think we know what it means, but you may want to just, um, you know, put a little color on it. And then, um, you know, perhaps what, what did this open up that had you not done and, and raised the flag that, hey, I'm going to start, right, my own company. It's, it sounds like it's opened up a whole bunch of other doors that would have never opened if I... Oh, my God. So that is so true. So why blend in? My mission is to, you know, connect the right opportunities with the right talent. And it, the only difference, I would say, you can say, hurry, but that's uh, that's probably any company, you know, they, they want to make sure that they have the right talent. But it's the under-representation uh, of certain groups. Um, and, you know, yes, you can go ahead and find a lot of career coaches out there. You can find a lot of keynote speakers out there. But it's my niche is the background I bring in. My niche sure. is the real experiences which I bring in. In various fields in the tech industry, there has been a lack of representation and still is, uh, be it systemic barriers, be it, you can say unconscious biases nice. or even limited access to resources, right? Like when I was growing up, yes, I did my master's in computers. Yes, I got a job, but I was always kind of like in minority, maybe one or two women in there. And I still feel like in product teams within corporates, there are not too many of us. Mm. In sales, in HR, you will still find a lot of women, but not sure. in real technical fields. So, you know, how can uh, my my version of why blend in is how can I create those connections and I can start being the force multiplier using my own connection networks, which I've used as well as as a hiring manager, the experiences which I have had to help them showcase their skill and stand out. You know, um, be, uh, you, each one of us have that expertise, the early in career or mid in career. How can you, and as I say, how can you be the G? You, there are so many gyms. Right. And probably so many James are looking for that same job. How is this James different sure. than all the other hundred James who are probably applying for the same job? It's I help them to go into their unique skills, mm. into the fostering that innovation and the creativity which they have and get them out through my coaching and they're able and connect them to the right talent which is a big win-win for them, for me, that I'm able to get more underrepresented or more diverse people sure. in the corporate world as well, as well as it helps the corporate because uh, guess what? Everyone wants to have good diversity and inclusion in their company these days. Sure. So I think the one is that, and the thing, um, you know, I, I would say my goal is to start do my two cents of creating this equitable society where, you know, everyone, regardless of, you know, race, background, race. color of our skin, they are treated equal, right? And and get it sooner than later, right? Like one of the things which my company does is make sure that we are able to build their brand and help them connect, stand out in their interview process as well. So that's one, that's the coaching side of coaching. it. Then yes, the 
speaking side of it anyway opened i always yes i was getting a lot of opportunities within my own company and i still do a lot of pro bonos sure. but then when the corporate started coming in i was like yes for, for sure and one thing after the other i think i have spoken to probably 50 plus corporate companies by now and many more so. um and it just James, I freak feel like as soon as I get on the stage, a what different version of Harpreet comes out. <laughs> what version comes out? I'd love to know. Like what? What? It, Tell me. It's it's, it's uh, the version which I feel like this is what I am trying to do because mm. you've been in the corporate industry for so long as well, James. Yeah. yeah. In our day job, we've got a role and a responsibility. We are accountable for, let's just say, it, this product. Harpreet, you got to make sure it launches with Colony, blah, 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 blah. Sure. You do that. Yes, you can take on a lot of stretch assignments, and you know, but your impact is defined. You yeah, can have, release. you know, like, yes, 2x, 3x, and we do that. But when you have to become a force multiplier, like me standing in stage in front of 20,000, 30,000 people, 1,000 people, 500, that is the amount of, I feel like they go with some niche. They go with yeah. some actionable next steps. And I frankly feel like I generally start with, even if one person is impacted, like my day is made. Yeah. Yeah, sure. Right. Yeah. And these are the, like someone will, it's the word of mouth. It's the word of, it's the connection like you and me had. You will talk about Harpreet to some other person. It's just that force yeah. multiplication, which makes me feel like, okay, I'm doing something. And, uh, and I don't want to say it's also the feeling of like, oh, you're becoming famous or anything. No, uh, I do have to take care of that side too, at least in the Seattle area. Like when I go somewhere in my, literally in my rags, they're like, and people recognize me because of my turban, right? And they're okay, like, yeah, sure. are you Harpreet? Uh, and I'm like, <laughs> should I say yes or no? <laughs> <Don't look at laughs> me. Yeah, that's great. But it's just opened up so many. I've got um, brand dealer uh, sponsorships, partnerships, um a lot of keynote speaking as part yeah. of it so yes it gives me a good amount of side income as well yeah no that's that's great as well as right to express yourself right which is something and that i know is, is the really main thing yeah which is the main thing and as i said i did so much pro bono but then yeah. i came to a point where you know our our time is will be um it is precious as well. So it's sure. less about, uh, you know, it's about how do, how can I keep giving back? Sure, sure. And and that's one of the things I really admire to you, right? Because it's not all about Harpreet, right? You've, yeah. you've obviously done an amazing job of growing in your career at Microsoft to right the level that you are right now. And you've got a lot of responsibility um, but I've seen you over the years, like give back to certainly inside of Microsoft. Right. But I also know, right. Cause I, I see all your, I see all your posts on LinkedIn. Right. I know you recently spoke, uh, at a woman in technology, uh, event, yeah. I think, uh, maybe I think it was two weekends ago. So that says a lot about you as a leader, right. And, um, right. Leaders who give back and who are really sincere and their dedication and growth for people, I think certainly stand out, right? And so I think you're a great example of someone who, who's who's done it to not only kind of help their career, certainly, but bring another a lot of other people along who maybe were the Harpreet of 20 years ago, right? Or exactly. so, and, and, and we're at a point, and you remember what that was like around, gosh, if I I wish I maybe had a deeper understanding or I needed someone to, you know, kind of bring me out of my shell a little bit in a safe space to allow me to kind of kind of do that. Right. Because environments like Microsoft, right, where there's a lot of talented people, it can be a little bit intimidating. Right. It is. It is. And then how do you make sure that. Um, you know, when when you talked about that, I spoke at Women in Technology and Leadership 
couple of weeks back, there were 50 or I would say 50 or 60 women mid to senior. And uh, many of them were uh, trying to get back in uh, the industry after, you know, bringing some miracles in this world. And when I say that, yeah, it's like yeah. they, they are new mothers. And, sure. uh, you know, I, I shared my story of that I was literally pregnant when I joined Microsoft. If I would be, uh, you know, still being in my that cover, I would have said no. Mm. I don't even want to go for an interview when I have this, you know, baby bum, right? Like, it's like, you know, nothing changes. I'm a mom. It's a natural process, which everyone, every, like, not everyone, but whoever decides to go into that motherhood goes through it, right? And it's okay that I look like I look different. And yes, with you know, but it's less about how do I look myself versus what I bring to the table. Right, right. And so you've got to embrace those challenges and take those risks, risks sometime. And, uh, you know, by sh I frankly feel like it was if when I'm able to share the these vulnerable and candid stories, I feel like it it's it's like, OK, I'm not the only one. Sure. I was thinking I can't do it, but if Harpreet can do it. I can try too. It's just those nudges, right? Like, sure. like literally, um, uh, you know, we read that in change management as well in cross site change management, right? You gotta say the things at least seven or eight times to have it stick in the head. Your mind. So probably, you know, a couple of times I've stated it. They will have someone else push them. They may make a change. It's. I don't have a magic formula for anyone who's listening to this. No coach has a magic formula. A coach is someone who will take who you are and nudge you because and make sure that you follow the road in a right way. I don't know what is that right way for you. We, you have to tell us yeah. that is the difference between a mentor and a coach. Right. A coach right. will bring the best out of you. A mentor will tell you what they had done when they were in the same situation. But a coach is literally like a, a guide for you that sure. you tell them. Sure, sure. And you've certainly been a guide for many people. And so one thing I'm I'm really curious about, right, is you, as I mentioned at the beginning of this, that you have a very large following on LinkedIn. Right. And not as large as Instagram, though. Instagram uh, is like close to 100K now. <laughs> OK, 100,000 people on Instagram. I just looked, you have like over 20,000 on LinkedIn. So, right. And I'm sure and I know you use that, right, to reinforce some of these messages that are really important to you around uniqueness, having people express themselves, take ownership, vulnerability, asking for help, learning and failing, growing. Um, right. And so, and I know there's not one again, silver bullet, but were there, you know, were there anything that you can share, like how your, your, you know, your following grew so fast, you know, so here's the thing. Uh, once you find out your niche, um, uh, James, and this is what I even tell about when people are talking about personal brand, find out who first you are. Right. Sure. And then stick to that. For me, I talk about five things on LinkedIn. Uh, personal branding, one of them. Right. Women in tech. Diversity and inclusion, mental health and product management. You will see me talking about these five things. Any you go back two years, you go back right now, you will see my post will be connected to one of these. Right. Mm -hmm. And then there are times when I make a little bit of a segue, maybe for a brand brand or maybe for that moment, um, like, you know, Juneteenth is coming, but that's connected to, uh, you know, diversity and diversity inclusion. inclusion. Right. Mm -hmm. Same for Pride Month, connected to diversity and inclusion. Women in tech. Oh, my God. You can connect like out of my 100 messages, 90, you can connect to women in tech. Right. Personal branding, again, that. So find your niche 
and stick to that. Your don't confuse your Audience. connections. Yeah, that they 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 know that you know if they're looking for a keynote speaker in Ali Sheb, diversity inclusion. Uh, women in tech, product management, or finding your embracing authenticity, you know, Harpreet is a great person for that. Um, and uh, and then keep keep honing the skills. Now, people will ask me that, Harpreet, you don't segue? I do, I do. But, you know, don't segue at the start of when you're branding yourself. Um, now, and then there are things and, you know, you can follow a lot of people. It's interesting. Social is not, I don't know, like, I, I'm not of a generation where, like, you know, there's Instagram, TikTok came after us, James, right, let's right, be honest, right? right. right? Yeah, we're, all, we're older. Um, my, yeah. my son, uh, he's just now joining LinkedIn and starting to build his profile and he sure. will look at my post and he will send me a WhatsApp or he will send me a message, mom five mistakes grammar mistakes and i'm like it's okay the other day and it's a joke we are not it's okay we are not in on the corporate world at this point so i can say this the other day i posted a picture with my dad who was visiting from india after so i saw my parents after four years and i saw that i yeah. i said um on instagram i said with my daddy and oh my god I did not know that is a wrong word to use on Instagram, on TikTok. And he said, mom, delete. You can only call father or dad. Mm. Not da and I'm like, but why? And he's like, and he talked about the other stuff. And I was like, oh my God, sorry. <laughs> <laughs> like, you know, so yeah. I yeah. am still learning. So here, like, you yeah. know, you make mistakes. It's okay. Take yeah. risks, make mistakes and keep moving. And it's not about likes and followers. Yeah. Remember what I said at the start of this podcast when I said we can actually say it, great podcast, close it right here. Because guess what? This is yes. what the you need. Yeah. You don't need, don't look for, yeah. oh my God, I've got 20 likes versus 500 likes. It's less about that. Someday it will go viral. Someday it will be just like, but it's it's a platform right. where you have to be consistent and keep doing yeah. it, and, and use the use a schedule version of it. Like I I don't have time to write it every day. Sometimes I just write months in advance or weeks in advance, and I just put it on schedule, and it keeps going. And, and there's a joke on it too, James. I was the other day something got posted on my social accounts, and my manager I was having a one on one. Yeah, And he said, Harpreet, someone, uh, you know, there's a perception which is starting to build up where like Harpreet is sick, but she's posting. And I'm like, I need to. And he said, can you indirectly tell them that you use the schedule? So I had to indirectly tell in a team meeting that, hey, by the way, if you see a post, it's not that I'm writing from my bed. It's yeah, been yeah. written and been like I'm yeah. using some of the algorithms or some of the tools. Told you. And so it's interesting. So there's pros and cons for both. Yeah, no. And, and so I think, yeah, you know, one of the things you just said, which is really a nugget for really anybody, I think, well, I think there's two things. One, doing the work to go inside, right? And and I think, you know, you mentioned the the seven steps of the framework that I um, spent a lot of time at Microsoft. That first one was, let, we need to go inside, right? We need to look exactly. inward, right? And what, what are your values? What, yeah, are, what, are, what are your critical mission? What, yeah. what, what stands inside. out for you? Yeah, yeah. And, you know, my experience is a lot of people, they either don't want to do that, don't know how to do that. I'm, I'm too busy, right? But I think just what you said, it's hard to be authentic on, let's say, LinkedIn or Instagram. If you haven't figured that out, right? So exactly. I think that's that's kind of one call to action that I know we both value of really going inside and embracing and digging and finding that love in our heart about who we are and what we want to bring out and and right taking off the armor or the layers that uh, you know built up over time. And I think the other one is just what you said is you know kind of given that unique identity, what are right? We can't be an expert in everything. But what are, as you said, I knew you've got five, right? What are those kind of key areas that 
are going to really reinforce, right? Your brand profile of, yeah, hey, I know Harpreet like is, is, is going to be talking about those things. And they, as you said, you're five, they're all reinforcing, right? They're, 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 they're not they're all over the place. Yeah. They're interconnected. Yeah. See, you cannot be, you cannot be master of all trades. Well, you know, or sure. jack of all trades, what they say. Jack of all right? trades, yeah. Yeah. Right. Well, you can be. Like, there are people who are still building through that, but at least, uh, you know, be authentic in what you're doing. Yes. It cannot be like you ta start talking about product management one day and tomorrow you're talking about totally different thing. It has to be, you know, and then experience needs to be. It cannot be like, interestingly enough, now chat GPT has come. It can write for you, right? So, sure. yes, but then how is that authenticity coming out? It needs sure. to be you as well. Right. No, and, and I, I love that. I think that just goes into kind of the uniqueness part um, and really just, yeah, allowing your creative juices, right, to go out there and, and be present and... Um, you know, you mentioned you were a TED speaker, TEDx uh, yeah, speaker, a TEDx, not TED yet. Okay. Okay. TED so let's just like TEDx, fire. right? And, right. And so, um, one, I'm curious about how that came about. Right. And, and again, giving yourself, right. A platform for, right. Inspiring men and women, right. It's just not women, men and women really to, uh, right, be proud of who they are and that uniqueness and bringing it out. And so, how did how did that come about? And what did you speak yeah. about? Yeah, In, interesting enough, right? So it was uh, during COVID, so it, it okay. was a very different version of I'm I'm trying to get into another TEDx stage, um, and hopefully, instead of all the rejection, hey TEDx speakers, like our our uh, or, you know the administrator, I'm here, um, right. It was through uh, during COVID times, and it was again through a connection. And they said that they're looking for someone, uh, you know, in Toronto. And I said I can, you know, travel was not, uh, you know, obviously right. I couldn't travel because of COVID. And they said we'll give you everything what you need to kind of, you know. Um, recorded at home and I did that but at the same time from the question which you asked how it was guess what it was through a LinkedIn connection wow. who had been following me and said they really needed someone like me to talk about personal branding so my TEDx is you know it's never too late for personal branding right mm. so go ahead give it a listen and uh, I am actually uh, you know on hopefully a couple of more will be in our in works and hopefully I'll be on a few other TEDx stages. After that, yes, I definitely want to get on a TED stage, but TED stage, you know, it's not it's not easy. But TEDx right. is a is a version of it. So sure. I love the I would love to do this in person and yeah. on that red dot. <laughs> like it's um I know it's it's pro bono, that's fine, but it's again my message. Right. It's your message. Can, yeah. uh, it's uh, that someone like me can be out there. Um, I don't know how many times I've seen my parents, uh, you know, in tears when they see mm. me in magazine covers, when they see, uh, you know, and, and they were like, oh, my God, we never thought you would do that. And so it's it's yeah. it's it feels good. Well, you know, and I can see it in your face, right? And um, I think I saw the picture. There was a picture. I think you you were with your parents or with your dad. I think I saw. I think it was on LinkedIn. I think you you said, yeah, I hadn't seen him in, in four years, right? And and so, right, that that's that's like an inspiration. Like I think sometimes we we limit our own self, as you said. Sometimes we don't think we could do something, or we don't want to put ourselves out there, or that feels uncomfortable. But gosh, when it is a little bit uncomfortable, right? That's 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 really exciting. And I think, um, you know, one of the things that you you said that I totally related to was you said, and I think it's a something you feel is you said when I go out onto that stage, I become a different person. Yes. Right? Yes. It it's right? like it's a, a girl who had dreams. Okay. And is able to achieve those dreams and hopefully make an impact on others uh, who have uh, been thinking about doing something, but have those layers still 
which are mm. not opened up. So it's like, how can I help others peel those layers that that anything is visible in this world? Mm. Now I'm a I'm a mom of a daughter too, right? And I will tell you, my son, who's actually graduating high school as well as his associate's degree, both at the same time, and um, it's interesting uh, to have a conversation with him as well as the girl who is almost eleven now, and sure. Uh, you know, want I want to make sure that they see that nothing is impossible. Uh, you know, yes, they will be a next generation and they are born and brought up here and um, they have yeah. a lot of options. Sure. Uh, but it's how do then they use their options in favor of them versus going haywire, right? Like when you have a lot of resources, I don't want them to also say that, oh my God, I yeah. like, you know, already have this why do i need like to even work or work hard sure. uh, so we try to kind of give the, the right skills and culture to them as well and it's not easy right no it's not easy right uh, being a parent is is um right it's hard work and um you know i don't know if you remember but i have three daughters and one of the reasons why i involve myself a lot in a lot of the the events at Microsoft and um, the, some of the speaking of it were at these were, were were women and part of it was I really wanted to understand right what what challenges do because my my young girls would eventually kind of be in there and it's funny when you said you know when you uh, get onto a stage you feel like a different person I remember when I did the Microsoft um, women's conference it was three thousand women there and I remember like going up there on stage. <laughs> Um, you know, it's a great experience of, of being there and just really learning from so many other amazing women like yourself at Microsoft who are smart, who are inspiring and, you know, great people to work with. Um, and so, you know, when you think about, you were going to say something, you know, go I ahead. You, look at say, you know, um, I had my, uh, our leader, one of our leader come to our women conference and. I don't know what happened to me. Uh, you know, I did not plan it out at all. But the first question which came out to me, how are you feeling to be a minority today? Mm. Oh, the like, first question came out. Yeah. The first like, question? You know, because he was, wow. he, you know, all yeah. women and he's the only man. I said, this is how we feel. Mm. Right? Like, this is yeah. exactly how we feel when yes, yes. we product teams and there's all men yes. and there's yes. only two of us. This is exactly how we feel. There's a little bit of apprehension. Am I stating yes. the right things? Am I stating in yes. the right way? Am I coming out right? Am I keeping my biases yeah. in check? And mm -hmm. he was like, oh my God, I'd never thought about this. Yes. No, I, I think you're right. Like, I, I I can say the same thing. You know, there was 3,000 women there. And I think I was, I, I saw maybe a couple other men. There may have been yeah. like, but, but it, I've never experienced anything like that in my life where you are, right? You you were one and all you looked around was like a whole bunch of women. So it was interesting, um, you know, interesting uh, experience. Um, and maybe just, uh, you know, we can get to, you know, eventually close here, but are there, are there certain things that I know you haven't been shy certainly about advocating, right? For, for women and minorities, you certainly posted on LinkedIn um, and others, you know, are there things that, you know, other men who are leaders, right? Things that we could be doing, right? As as men leaders to really help ensure women have that same opportunity in life. And I don't know, any, any thoughts that you might want to share? Yeah, I would say a couple of things which come to my mind is uh, don't treat them different. There's yeah. actually, you know, yeah, the, uh, sometimes people ask me if you're stating that, then why do you have all these women conferences? Why do you, because we're not there yet. We, mm -hmm. those are the ways we are trying to raise awareness. But for men, you know, when you're interviewing, interview them as any other person, um, you know, do not interview them as like, you know, she's my diversity check. That's mm. the least thing you can do. I cannot tell you, James, how many of my mentees come back and they say, Harpreet, I think I was just a diversity check. And I'm mm. like, why do you feel like that? Because these were the questions they were asked. Mm. There were no follow on. And I'm like, go ahead and ask me a technical question. I'm ready sure. to whiteboard. And no, they were <laughs> just a check, right? Like, let's not do that. 
or if someone do get a promotion, a higher promotion, do not ever say, oh, they all they had to get you there just to show like, a, sure. please, that is the last thing you should say. We've got the right expertise. We've got the right strengths to be there. And I frankly feel like I have I, in my own career, I feel like I had to do much more than my, sometimes my peers to be heard, to show that I'm ready for that next big thing. Um, I think there's some work which our leaders can do to put us at, at the same scale. Um, and then keep learning. If, and then whoever is listening, if you are putting diversity and inclusion champion or advocate, anywhere on your profile, do it, walk the talk. Just do not put it out there for the folks to show that you are that because it's the decision makers. If you're writing that and if you're going into the same board meetings and in the same decision making meetings and you're making the same decisions, guess what? You're just playing around with us. And we're not going to let that happen, right? Like, so I think we all make mistakes. Um, sure. So for all the men who are hearing me, uh, we need you. We mm -hmm. really need you. We need your help. We cannot, uh, and even not saying that we don't need women, we need both of us. Sure. Uh, be at home, be a partner. I cannot do all this, James, if I don't have the support from my better half, right? Who, sure. Who's letting me get on these stages and letting me state sometimes, you know, home things like he said me this or like sharing vulnerable stories. Sure. He's letting me go right books, go write articles. And so be that support system for your other halves or your partners, whatever, like you're calling them. And if they are making mistakes, help them versus criticizing because we are, we are all prone to mistakes. You know, you learn from your mistakes and you keep growing. And then if you ever see something happening, bullying or other things, raise your hand. Do it at the moment versus after the moment. Sometimes things happen and you're you're like, you go, I've seen that also happen. People will come after and said, sorry, I didn't spoke. And I'm like, but why didn't you not? That was the moment, not not right sure. now. The harm is done. Yeah. So those are things which are coming uh, at the top of my head. But, uh, you know, I, I will tell you in today's, uh, and I'm not stating any lie here, in my current role, then I uh, there are only few of us. I've got amazing male allies and shout out to them that because of them, I'm rising too because yes. they see the potential in me and they're bringing me along. Um, and so I, I would say, you know, be be like them or be like the, the my first manager who hired me when I was even pregnant because he saw that potential in me. Yeah, no, that's great. And you've used that potential. I've seen you, obviously. We worked together, gosh, many years ago and, and you've really taken advantage of leveraging that, right? Um, and, um, have made tremendous relationships, right. With, with all kinds of people, men, women to really advance your career. And so our pre, um, yeah, well, we can just bring it to a close here. Um, like it's just been such a pleasure to reconnect and, and have you share some things that I think anybody could really benefit through some of the things that you shared around, um, you know, and around your LinkedIn profile around your authenticity. And I think what, like what I love the most and when I see your posts, I think you are that beacon of just reminding people around your uniqueness and loving it and letting it be a light, right? Letting yeah. it, it really be a light. And no, the um, way you say, say it, yeah. it feels like, oh my God. <laughs> no, but it's, it's really true, right? Like I see things it's and humbling. again, what are they? It's authentic, right? And for a lot of people who are out there who... Um, uh, maybe, maybe their flame is a little bit dim, right? Maybe, maybe they don't really know that it could be really this, this something that's, that's big. And, and sometimes it takes people like you, right. To show people that it can be done, right. That, yeah. it, that it, 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 it can be done, right. Not like in a day or a week, right. As you said, it has to be something that you commit to over time. You're going to say something, Harpreet. 
No, uh, closing thoughts, like, right, like, as you just said, if when you are stating it, and I'm like, do I do all this? Oh yes, you do. It feels like, uh, yeah, you do. but it's very, uh, thank you for having me. It's really humbling. And it's, uh, it's, it's an honor. Yeah. Um, the last thing I would say is, I used to, one of the biggest mistake I did, James, early in my career was look at titles. And titles. stating I want to reach that title. To all the people listening, success and full fulfillment is very, very subjective. Very subjective. Um, there was once a time, and I'll end up with this, uh, when I, uh, you know, and you know this, uh, every floor of Microsoft, we have a we have a kitchen, and which is full yes. of, uh, you know, free drinks and uh, free free soft drinks. <laughs> right, 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 right. <laughs> clarify that and coffee and there was janitorial services who will come and clean uh, there was once i was late at work and uh, there was this person cleaning up and i said hey how are you thank you so much for cleaning and you know and this person started crying and i said mm. are you okay like and he said in my 10 years here mm. no one has ever asked me how am i doing wow Wow. And I hugged that person. I said, mm. you know, without you, we are not successful. And that is a true statement. I did not say sure. that just to make him feel good. If our restrooms are not clean, if our kitchens sure. are not clean, if our offices are not clean, we cannot work. We cannot be productive. So they are successful they are helping us to fulfill what we are supposed mm -hmm. to do so it's very subjective so less about titles be kind to each other and that you know title fulfillment can evolve over time right like you become a director you want to become a partner next you want to become you know cvp next whatever that is whatever your unique journey is stay true to yourself be open and exploring other things you know Keep dedication, like the resilience, the perseverance, which you get from multiple no's, which I had got. Um, and then keep that growth mindset, as we say, that learning mindset, because there's no books. There are hundred books which will tell yeah. you the ways, but your book needs to be written by you. Oh, I love that. I love that. That's a, that's a, thanks for sharing. That's a great way to end. And for people who want to find you, I, there's whyblendin.com. Yep. Is your, is your, is your, what is your website? I know, um, you know, they can find you uh, on LinkedIn as well. Uh, I know you've got uh, Instagram. I'm looking at it here. A uh, why blend in coach. Yes. Is there, is there any why blend in? Why blend in? Yeah. Why blend in? So if you go on whyblendin.com, it's connected to my socials as well. Okay, great. Uh, so it's a great uh, one place to start connecting with me. And yeah, it's so good. Thank you so much, James. <laughs> Yes, no good. And you're such a wonderful uh, human being, a leader, technology leader, all in one package, one beautiful person uh, who's an inspiration. Thanks for making up time and Thank really you. Thanks for everything having. that you do to, to help other people, Heartbreak. It's great seeing you again. Thank you. Thank you. All right. Thanks so much.